Hi there. In this one, I want to talk about attribute set data. What is attribute set data? If I come over and add an attribute here and plug in the points, you can see I've got this funny yellow slot and like a line underneath it, right? Now, if I mouse over, you can see it is of type attribute set. So what is that? I'm going to tap the A key on the attribute noise here to inspect it. And all of this information down here. This is attribute set data. And it's actually the beating heart of PCG. I think one of the things that a lot of tutorials that I watched when I was learning skipped this stuff over. I mean, cursory mention or whatever, but like this is actually where the magic is happening. So to get in and be able to access this data, generate new data, modify data, and store this data down here is very, very important. So that's what we're going to talk about in this tutorial. So the setup here is going to be identical to the other PCG basics tutorials that I have done. You need to enable the PCG plugin in the content browser, right click, create a blueprint, and the blueprint needs to be of class actor. Right click again and create a PCG graph and then open up your blueprint, add a PCG component like so, and then select the PCG component and then scroll down until you hit the graph section and drag your graph in. That way you can pass data directly from your blueprint actor into your graph without having to dig through a bunch of stuff in the graph itself. Over here in the PCG graph, we have a create points grid set to 100 in X, Y, and Z for the grid extents and 25 in X, Y, and Z for the cell size. We have a get actor data. The mode is set to get single point and we are piping those into a copy points node. This is going to move the location of our points grid to the location of our blueprint. I have a balance modifier to shrink the size of the points to 0.2 of their original scale so that we can see each one individually. And then I am feeding those into a density noise here, which is just going to randomize our density values, giving us this random assortment of grays here that we are seeing in our debug. So if you look down here, you can see we have a lot of data associated with the points that are generated here in our points grid, starting with the index, the position, the rotation, the scale, the bounds, the color, density, steepness, seed, which is a random value that we use to generate whatever kind of random outputs we want, like the density here is informed by the seed values. And then this actor reference is just a path to the blueprint itself. I can't expand it very easily, but you'd take my word for it. So we are not limited to this information. We can add more. And so what I want to do is I am going to take the average X positions and we're going to add that at the end as a new attribute. So I'm going to pull off of here type in the word average. And what I'm specifically interested in for my source is not last. If you go, if you just leave it at last, which is the default value, it's just going to take, I guess, the actor reference, which wouldn't make a ton of sense. What I want is the position. So you can click this little plus sign here and we're going to scroll down to position, but I don't want the entire position, all three values here. I just want the X position. So I'm going to just write dot X. So if I inspect this node by tapping the A key, you can see that I'm getting a value. It is a, a type double, which is basically a, a float, and the value is 1541. So what I wanna do here is I wanna make this accessible to points downstream. So all I need to do to make that happen is I have to click on this output attribute name, and then we'll just call this average X. But this is just the value by itself. What I need to do is add this attribute in. So I'm going to plug this in like that. You can use last up here. That would be valid. There's really only one thing in there, but I prefer to be a little bit more explicit with it. So I'm going to copy what we've named our attribute and I'm going to plug it in here and I'll just use the same name for the output target. So here's what that means. Now when I hit the A key to inspect this node, I have all of the original data that I started with. And if I scroll all the way to the end, I now have a new value, which is generated here by averaging all the X positions of our points. If you don't give it a name, it doesn't exist. So it's really, really important. Also, you get a little bit of a warning there. So it's really important that you make sure that you are very explicit with how you are passing data into and out of nodes. And this is one of the things that's a little bit unusual about PCG relative to other systems in Unreal. It's very dependent on the actual strings that you use for the names of your attributes. So let's do a little test here to confirm that we're generating the correct average X value. 
I'm going to pull off of my points and type in the word set. We're just going to replace their current x value with the average value. So for the input source, we need to select position. This is what we are modifying. And for the output source, we can set this to average x. Now the node is grayed out because we don't have anything plugged into input B. And because the data lives on the points themselves, we can just pipe them directly in here. And if I tap the D key to a debug the set node, and then circle back over here and turn this off, you can see now all of those points have moved to their respective average X position. You don't have to add the attribute to use it. You can just generate it and then pipe it in directly if you want. Now, uh, it is worth mentioning here that the reason this works is I am looking for data called average X and average X exists here uh, in the output name. So it can find it. If I were to change this to something else, this would break because it would be looking for information on this input that it's not getting. Let's take this a little bit further. What if instead of moving all of the points directly to their average X position, we took into consideration the points density. So the higher the density, the closer we get to the average position and the lower the density, the more the point tends to stay where it is. To do that, I need to create a distance value between the point's current position and its average X position. So I'll do that using a subtract node. We're gonna use the average X position for the start. And we're gonna use the X position, the current position of the point as the end. And I'm gonna call this one distance. So if I inspect this, tapping the A key, we can see we've got that new distance value here. I wanna multiply the distance value by its density. So once again, we'll take the out from our subtract node and pipe it into both A and B of the multiply. And we're going to use the distance value and we're going to multiply it by density and I want to call this one move val and if we inspect that node we can see now we've got our move value from here we need to do an add and we're going to be adding our move value to our X position. So if I turn on debug for that and turn off for this, we don't see anything because I actually need to set this to the position.x. And once I have done that, we're actually modifying the data that is determining where these points are going to be. And you can see that the lighter the density, the closer to the center we are, uh, or at least the average exposition, and the darker the density, the more we tend to stay where we were. So the last bit is really important. You can store the output target, which is gonna be the result of this operation, as a new category in the attribute set data, or you can apply it directly to an existing piece of data. So that was the issue there is without setting this output target, the data exists, but it's not really being applied. So if you overwrite an existing attribute indicated by the dollar sign, it'll update and you'll be able to see it here. Otherwise, it's just gonna be stored as data, or if you have nothing here, it'll only exist on the node. Let's look at another example here. What if I wanted to use the density to modify the scale? Now in the current setup, the density goes from zero to one, so the points can only get smaller if I multiply the density in. So I'm gonna take the density and multiply it by three. So we'll add a multiply node. For the input source, we'll select density. I'm gonna right click out here and we will create an attribute. Density, if we mouse over here, it'll say it's a double. So we wanna make sure that we are using the default value here of double and we can set it to three. I'm now storing this data here. I can just overwrite the existing density if I want. You can see they get a little bit brighter. As soon as you drive the density above one, they just become emissive. So now I've got my increased density value, which uh, if we inspect the node, we should see that over here, right? So we're going as high as 2.8 on that point. So we'll pull off another multiply. We will use density for the input 
And for the input source 2, we will go and grab scale. And when we do that, we get an error. So what's going on here is it's complaining because we're using two different data types. Scale is a vector and density is a double. So we need to basically create a vector from our density that we can use to plug in here for our scale vector to work with. Let's right click over here and type make vector attribute. By default, that's gonna be a vector two. We wanna set it to be a regular old vector there, which will have three inputs. We'll plug our points into each input and come over here to the input source and select density for all of them. This is going to complain because the output is set to out source. We just need to give it a new name and it'll automatically update the type there to be a vector. For the multiply, let's go ahead and set input source one to scale. And we'll plug this into input source two. And we'll just tell it what it is that we're interested in using. What attribute? Down here, this is going to have that extra value there. So if we debug these points and turn off debug on the lower one, you can see that we have effectively used the density to scale up those points. So it's important to keep your data types compatible. For the final thing I want to show you, let's head over to the blueprint. I'm just going to create a variable. Call it my float var. Let's make it public. And we'll set the default value over here to whatever, 50. So if I come over here and type in connector property, We give it the same name that we gave the variable. If I inspect it, you can see there it is, right? So if I wanted to add this data in as a, as an attribute on the point, it's very simple to do so. You just add the attribute, type it in and we'll go ahead and call it parent VP data or whatever you want to call it. So if we inspect the node now, we scroll all, all the way to the end, you can see there is that data. So very, very simple to get data from the blueprint and add it in as an attribute. Let's take this a tiny bit further. I'm going to drop down another add node, plug our points into both A and B for the input source one. I'm going to select parent BP data. For input source two, I'm going to get the position in Z. So that's the vertical axis. And then we'll set the output to the parent uh, position.z. If I turn on debug for that and disable it on this node here, you can see that I can now control the vertical position of these points very simply with an exposed parameter on this actor. All right, well, I hope you found this to be helpful. Working with attribute set data is a fundamental component of creating custom functionality in your PCG graphs. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section and thanks for watching.